Welcome to another informative episode of the AWS Cloud Practitioner Exam question series on Exam Incentive channel. Please like, share and subscribe to get regular updates on new episode releases. Let's get started. Question number 101. What is the best resource for a user to find compliance related information and report about AWS? If you're watching this episode, I'm assuming that you have done episode number 1 to 17. You have done 100 questions before this and some questions are going to be repeated in terms of the concept. So wherever I find that, uh, it's now very obvious in terms of a service that we already covered. I will, uh, instead of using elimination technique, I will go uh, straight to the answers. So the keyword here is uh, we need to find compliance related information. And we all know uh, if you need to find compliance related information for uh, AWS, we have the service for it. And that's AWS Artifact. AWS Artifact is the most reliable and efficient resource for finding compliance related information and reports of AWS. Uh, I've worked on uh, projects uh, in the past where we were using AWS services and for GDPR compliance, BCI compliance, or any other compliance related to a particular region. Uh, if you need anything to be provided to the auditors, we used to you know just go to AWS Art, uh, Artifact console, uh, retrieve the report and provide it to auditors. So that's AWS Artifact for you. We got our answer, but let's quickly eliminate the answers that are incorrect. So AWS Marketplace, uh, it Marketplace is, it focuses on third-party software and services. So this is a place where uh, any third-party uh, companies to AWS, they will put their applications and software and services so that uh, customers can buy those from Marketplace. It's nothing to do with uh, compliance information, so that's gone. That's why it was not a correct answer. Amazon Inspector, we know. Uh, based on the past uh, few episodes, it is for analysis of your environment for finding vulnerabilities, and it's not for uh, you know providing compliance reports. So that's an incorrect option for that reason. And the la last one, AWS support. AWS support can assist you with questions. They can provide you any kind of services, uh, answers to your queries, but uh, it's not for compliance report. So there is a service made for this because AWS knows you know, compliance reports are very important for audits and for uh, record keeping. So AWS will not. Uh, expect customers to contact AWS support because they'll be overwhelmed and the turnaround time will not be great anyway. Anyway, they don't do this job. The real answer is AWS Artifact. Option A is the answer for this particular question. Question number 102, which AWS service enables companies to deploy an application close to end users? So the keyword here is deploying application closer to the end users. And we have done this in past multiple times. Similar question, you know, if you want to deploy application, you are basically talking about content delivery closer to users, and that's CloudFront. CloudFront's objective is to speed up the content delivery by serving it from the edge locations closest to users. So if you have, I, I have given you in past a movie example that suppose you're running a streaming service like Netflix or Prime Video, uh, probably, you know, broadcasting or streaming a movie, say Oppenheimer, uh, which is predominantly a Hollywood uh, US-based movie. And if somebody from say India is watching it, it the CloudFront service would take that movie, download it, cache it, and put it in the closest to edge location. So the first user will probably get the latency, but next time, if anybody tries to access the same movie, it's not going to go to US servers. It will uh, fetch it from the uh, you know edge locations nearer to the India. So on the other hand, suppose there is a movie from Bollywood, and that is being watched by someone in USA, which is predominantly deployed in servers in AWS India. In that case, the first copy of that movie would take longer than there would be latency, but when uh, the subsequent user access it, it will be fetched from say USA server. So that's how CloudFront works. It it, it is a caching mechanism for uh, you know anything which is a static data, streaming data. We got our answer. Let's rule out others just to understand why we have not selected those. AWS auto scaling. Auto scaling is for balancing the demand for your infrastructure. It's nothing to do with bringing uh, you know content nearer to the user. So that's wrong. Next service, AWS AppSync. It builds and manages mobile and web app backend. It's not specifically focused on delivery of content. So that's wrong for that reason. Route 53, you all know it's a DNS service. It is used for directing web traffic to your application, but it doesn't cache content for users. So incorrect answer again. So option D is gone. You're left with your option A, which we have already selected. So that's why uh, the other three options are wrong. Your answer is answer option A. Exam tip, uh, just as a revision tip, if you want to deploy, uh, an app closer to end user, you want content closer to user, low latency, static or video content, you need to select CloudFront for, as a solution for that particular scenario. I believe that's it on this question. Let's move on to the next question. Question number 103, 
which AWS service or feature improves network performance by sending traffic through AWS worldwide network infrastructure. So we all know we have done this in past. If you need uh, to go through AWS worldwide network, your answer is AWS Global Accelerator. It is a service specifically designed to leverage the advantage of AWS Global Network for enhanced network performance and optimized traffic routing. So you use AWS Global Accelerator. That's your answer for this question. If you look at other options, uh, I'll explain you why we haven't selected those. Now, first one is root table. Root table is for forwarding rules. It's like uh, you have mapping of uh, traffic comes in and a traffic goes out. There's a uh, mapping done with respect to uh, IP addresses and the rules defined uh, for VPC. This is this is for VPC. It doesn't leverage any global network for improved performance. So option A is wrong for that purpose. Root table is not for you know improving network performance at uh, global uh, worldwide infrastructure. Option B, transit gateway. Transit gateways uh, use cases, it connects VPC and on-premises network, but it doesn't do any optimized routing across broader AWS network. So specific use case of connecting VPCs with on-premises, not for what we want here. So that's wrong for that reason. Amazon VPC, it Amazon VPC is your virtual private you know cloud. So why do you use it? You use it to have your own uh, AWS resources isolated in a private cloud so that you have some sort of security and those resources do not are not accessible by other uh, services or other resources from other customers so amazon vpc is for that it's not a network performance solution it's it's your resource isolation solution so that's wrong for that purpose the correct answer for this particular question is answer c option c let's move on to the next question question number 104 which aws service provides highly durable object storage i I think you know this answer. It is Amazon S3. Amazon S3 is the most durable object storage. It got 11 nines of durability. Uh, that means there is only minute amount of chance of losing data due to hardware failures. So it's an easy one. Uh, what about other options? Now, EFS, we have seen in uh, previous episodes that it is durable, uh, but it's not as durable as S3. Elastic block store, uh, Again, it's specific to EC2 instance. It's not designed for durability object storage like S3 and Amazon FSx. That one is, uh, it's a shared file storage for EC2. It again is not designed for, you know, highly durable storage. So that's your, you know, exam tip. You want to talk about which is the most durable object storage across AWS. That's your AWS S3. Answer for this particular question is option A. Set on this particular question. The next question in the series, one of five, which responsibility belongs to AWS when a company hosts its database on AWS EC2 instance? The rule here is the security of the cloud is responsibility of AWS, but security in the cloud is responsibility of the customer. So if you look at option A, database backups, as we mentioned, uh, EC2 is an infrastructure as a service and customers are responsible for backups of the EC2 instance. Database software patches, again, similar situation. Customers are responsible for installing and managing database software both. Operating system patches, the company will apply the operating system patches to the guest OS running and on the EC2 instance. However, option D, option D is the original operating system installation is done by AWS. Slightly debate question or maybe confusing because option A and B is pretty clear that they are not AWS's responsibility. But when you look at option C and D, operating system patches and system installation, uh, original operating system installation is an AWS uh, responsibility. It will provide the original operating system. And based on the EC2 instance, you have selected Linux, Windows, or anything else. Uh, but the patches will be your responsibility as a customer. So that's it on this question. Answer to this question is option D. And I believe that was the last question in this episode. That brings us to the end of this episode. I will see you in the next episode of the series soon. If you like the content and want to get notified when I release the next episode of the series, then please subscribe to this channel. This is Exam Tricks and Tips. You're watching the AWS Cloud Practitioner Series. See you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.